season so it is the end of April here in Tennessee currently at time of recording it's the end of April everywhere actually um, and yes I still have my Easter decorations up come, come at me bro I think they're happy um, so that means that we have Ren fairs coming up so we happen to live in a place where there are two Renaissance festivals within two hours of us or just outside of two hours from us so the Georgia Renaissance Festival and the Tennessee Renaissance Festival my partners and I are all officially vaccinated now, so we are going to go to both. Um, so because of that, this channel for the next month, maybe month and a half, is going to be pretty much exclusively Ren Fair content. I hope that's okay with all of you, because um, it's my channel and that's what I'm gonna do. But today, before I start on like my kirtle and my dress and my corset that I'm going to be making, um, I decided to do my accessories. I am using the flowers that I had left over from my Q&A video, and I'm going to be making a flower crown, and then I am going to be using some canvas duck that I just bought to make a purse or like a bag and a matching mask to wear to both Renaissance festivals and also maybe the Colorado Renaissance Festival if I'm back in Colorado for that, what we shall. So the very first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and speed up this video because you guys have seen me glue flowers to shit before. So I decided to go with a slightly new technique for this video. Instead of using hot glue, which is my normal for flower crowns, I went in with E6000. I figured it would last a little bit better in the southern heat. Not that I've had flower crowns sliding off my head before, but I just figured I'd try something new. Um, but E6000 takes about 7,000 years to dry, um, so I just wrapped it with embroidery floss to keep the flowers on, and also to cover up some of that bright gold from the headband that I'm using just because it's not 100% the look I wanted to go for. Um, Toulouse is a glue fiend, so he came over to try to get high off my supply. I do really like the way that the embroidery floss made it look like a little bit more homemade or old fashioned, if that makes sense. Um, it also worked really well to keep the uh, flowers in place while the E6000 dried and it's going to be really secure. Gluing everything together only took me about 15-20 minutes, but we'll go ahead and skip forward. I've recently been making my flower crowns kind of more asymmetrical. I think it uh, creates a little bit more interest, and especially since I don't make round crowns, I make them on headbands, um, I can kind of mess around with the heaviness on either side. I definitely don't plan my crowns beforehand, I kind of just go with the flow and However, um, I am going to continue on with my Renaissance accessories project, and so that is going to mean making a mask and a matching bag. So I'm going to use one of the masks that she sent me as a guide and basically just trace it onto the canvas that I'm going to make my bag and my mask out of. So I'm going to use the canvas as the outer layer, the interfacing as the middle layer, and then just a cotton I have um, as the inner, or like the face layer, the third layer. You got, you get it. And then with the rest of the canvas, I'm going to be making a bag, and then I'm going to paint both to match. My plan is to paint them before sewing everything together, just so I have a flat surface to work on. Speeding through this thing once again, I traced around the mask that my mom had sent me. 
I then folded the canvas in half so that I could cut out two easily, pretty simple. I had plenty of selvage, so I cut it out first just to make it a little bit easier to work with and then cut a seam allowance around my initial outline. I then repeated that process with the interfacing and the cotton jersey. I didn't pay much attention to selvage or using the fabric the most efficiently. I was tired. I'm sorry. It's all in me. Give me one I had the camera pointing at my machine the entire time I was sewing um, and forgot to turn it on. So, it is sewn. It is not sewn well. Um, so I made sure to do double uh, stitching on top and bottom um, so nothing came apart. Um, as you can see, my stitch lines are not beautiful. I really didn't um, focus on them too hard uh, because I'm going to paint over them anyways and I was more concerned about them being strong than pretty. I have hours of painting footage and I don't know how I'm going to show this to you all just as I did not know what I was doing when I started this process. I just knew that first things first, I needed to cover up those sewing lines. So I decided a good way to do that would be to paint it brown and basically give it like a faux leather look. If you squint really hard, I thought that would be good. And I am mixing all of my own colors, so that's where I start. I thought with this brown I had hit a color that I liked, uh, but joke's on me because I ended up hating it and painting over it. Once the two dark lines were done, I decided to make a field color of brown that was lighter, more leathery. This is where I really decided that I didn't like that darker brown. The contrast was just too stark, um, and it looked a lot more black in person, especially compared to this much lighter brown. Once I went back and fixed that first color, I went in and just started adding grass. I still wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do at this point. I just wanted vegetation, and so I sort of took it from there. I was able to jump right back in on Monday night and I knew the first thing I needed to do was to mix up some color. You can see me overusing that black again because I will not remember how potent that color is. Um, but I actually kind of didn't hate this. It was like a really dark sage that I kind of loved. Now, yes, had I been prepared, I would be using a sea sponge because that is what real artists use. But I had a kitchen sponge, so that is what I used. And to be perfectly honest, I kind of dug the way it looked. When that was done, I went in with a lighter sage color that I actually got just from lightening up the sage I already had and put that on top. Pretty much covering that grass that I did the first day, but to be honest, I kind of hated that grass, so I was happy to see it go. I then went in and just put little grass spikes um, over the worst offending areas. Um, I did end up painting over the leather bits a bit, uh, but I'll fix that later. Here's where we start to get pretty. I decided I was just going to go simple and do a flower field. So I went in with my different sized brushes and kind of in an impressionistic manner tapped out the different flowers that I had put on my flower crown already. I then went through and added the little violets to both the masks and the bag. Last things for the flower field were just these little yellow flowers that I added throughout that really brightened the whole thing. Everything is painted. I've left it to sit for a couple of days just because with the puff paint it takes a while for it to dry, especially um, out here in the south where it's humid. Um, so everything is nice and dry. So now I can stitch it all together. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. Before I could sew anything together, I needed to thread the strap through the drawstring part of the bag. I hate threading things through other things. I find it so incredibly difficult to do, 
so I used this straw that we just randomly had at the Airbnb. Um, it worked well the first time, and then the second time I dragged it through, and it only dragged the straw through, not the leather strap. Um, this was very frustrating. I eventually got it done and won't make you watch all of this. I was then able to stitch the two sides together and turn it right side out again. I then assembled the mask. It's actually a really simple thing to do. This is not a mask tutorial by any stretch of the imagination. There are a ton of tutorials out there and I highly recommend if you like sewing or want to learn how to sew, these are actually quite simple um, and an awesome way to just like add a little bit of fun to your wardrobe because we're going to be wearing them for a while. Okay, so everything is done. I have my flower crown here. Um, I always put my flower crowns on headbands. I find that they just stay on a little bit easier. Um, that's just a personal preference. And then my mask and my bag. And I am really pleased with these. Um, I kind of lost myself when I was so, or when I was painting them. Um, I kind of looked up and two plus hours had passed, but I think it was absolutely worth the effort. This thing is definitely not letting any germs in. I think it's going to get a little toasty in here, but it'll be worth it because it's so pretty. Um, and hopefully we will be able to distance enough to be able to take it off at least to eat and drink. Um, the bag is a little large. Um, I am still planning on just like wearing it off of my belt. I don't think it'll look too odd. It is what it is. Um, I'm definitely not cutting it down because I'm too proud of the painting. I do currently have a whole sweatshirt stuffed in here. Not that I'll need a sweatshirt. The Renaissance Festival weather for this weekend, I think is 79 degrees in Atlanta. So I won't need the sweatshirt, but it does fit quite a bit. I will absolutely be able to fit um, my sunscreen, which is really the big thing that I need. That's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Coming up next, I'm going to make my under things, my lingerie that I'll be wearing to the Renaissance Festival and then my kirtle and dress, and then my corset. So if you wanna see any of those things, please do give me a like and a subscribe on this video. Comment, let me know how you found me. Let me know um, if you're going to any Renaissance festivals this year. I am going to be posting vlogs from both um, on this channel later this summer, so you will get to see our experiences there. And with all of that being said, I hope you have a good day.